research and discovery. Futurists. I have a lot of ba balance problem and uh, my muscles, uh, they were very weak and uh, I have pain in uh, my eyes. It was the optic nerve I understood afterwards. So I went to the doctor and after a while I got the Diagnosis. The neurologist told me, listen, stay calm, but magnetic resonance has confirmed that you have multiple sclerosis. The first reflection was that I saw a wheelchair. Yeah, I think it's, you usually do that because this is what MS uh, I thought it was... I feel good. I work. I can walk. I have a wife, two kids. I have a fairly normal life. But in the back of my mind, there's always this slight, this slight uncertainty. From the streets and gardens of Rome to hospital rooms in Stockholm, the reality of MS. But what is it? Multiple sclerosis affects the ability of nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord to communicate with each other. Severe cases result in permanent disability. There are two parallel processes in this disease. First, there's an inflammatory process which is chronic and stays in the patients for life. At the same time, there's a neurodegenerative process when patients lose different components of their central nervous systems. This neurodegeneration is very likely linked to the inflammatory process. Researchers at the Italian Institute of Health coordinate a European Union research project aimed at developing new therapeutic strategies to treat patients. Biologists first had to get a better understanding of the complex mechanisms behind the development of the disease. Molecular analysis of damaged tissues confirmed that inflammation of the nervous system somehow sparks the neurodegenerative process. We can, for instance, analyze lesions inside plaques of the central nervous system of patients. We can not only confirm the existence of these lesions, but also their extension. And we can somehow establish how those lesions are connected to the presence of cells from the inflammatory system. Researchers now know better how the disease evolves but they're still unsure how it emerges and why it affects some people while sparing others. We still don't know what causes this disease. What we do know is that genes and environment interact in a complex way in the development of multiple sclerosis. It's here, in the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, that genetic studies have been performed to further understand the causes of the disease. Laboratory experiments were combined with clinical studies of volunteers like Annette. Now in her 50s, the former stewardess was diagnosed with MS in 2005. I'm doing the, the same things that I used to do, but I'm not running now. Uh, I'm walking with my sticks and uh, I'm not dancing uh, jazz that I used to do, belly. Uh, I, um, I'm doing yoga. The research helped to identify some genes thought to be linked to the disease's origin. We have uh, at least found five new risk genes for MS. And these uh, genes, uh, they uh, one at a time affects the risk just a little. But even though they affect the risk a little, they point to a disease pathway which may provide uh, ideas for new targets for therapy. Thomas Olsen then combined that genetic data with different lifestyle and environmental patterns, and he came to certain conclusions. There have been three main suspects with regard to lifestyle environmental factors. It's sun exposure, vitamin D, it's the Epstein-Barr virus, uh, and it's smoking. And smoking is a kind of recent um, finding. 
And uh, in our material here in Sweden, which is the largest uh, published so far, we have seen that smoking is increasing the risk for MS with around 60%. But together with two different genes, risk genes for MS, smoking can increase the risk 25-fold. That means 2,500%. Breakthroughs in biology, genetics and environment have helped researchers to focus on new treatments against neurodegeneration, but not necessarily involving new drugs. Clearly there's a big need to develop new drugs to help the patients. The problem is, however, that it costs approximately 1 billion euro and 10 to 15 years of hard work to develop these new drugs. So, one might wonder if it's possible to, to take a shortcut. We've been trying to see whether a drug that was used many, many years ago to treat hypertension, that is increased blood pressure, also could be used to stop neurodegeneration. And what we have shown is, in model systems, is that it actually, to a certain extent, stops neurodegeneration. A joint European research effort with a final aim, to corner a still elusive disease. Our expectation is that science will provide soon some specific results, if not for us long-term MS patients, at least for younger sufferers. 25 years ago with MS research, uh, you had to tell the patient, come back when you are worse. Then, 15 years ago, we got some treatments that uh, reduced uh, the number of relapses with like 30%. And now there are certain treatments that may decrease the relapses and the decrease the disease with like 60-70%. I don't expect that researchers will find a miracle cure. It's a complex disease, but I think they will find solutions for some of us. So the challenge for us now is to you know, understand the cause uh, and the pathogenesis of the disease much better. Uh, so in 15 years' time, we have much more precise therapies. I feel very good and I have met a lot of people with MS and uh, they also feel good. So it's not necessary that it has been uh, stopped in a wheelchair and if it does uh, it's not the end of the life because um, uh, I think uh, I have a very good life now. <laughs>